good afternoon and welcome to our monthly town hall meeting on the first Thursday of each month. You are in for a great pleasure in, in being able to um, see Sister Angel and Emily from the Kobe House here in Chicago. My name is Minister Kimberly Limore. I'm the uh, pastoral associate at St. Sabina Church in Chicago, but also a member of the steering committee of the uh, uh, of the CPMC. Um, so I, I appreciate you all joining us on today. We are about ready to get started. I am going to open in prayer and then I'll introduce our two wonderful speakers that we have that will be sharing with you on this day. So if we can all just place ourselves in the presence of God. I am reading a prayer that um, I found um, seen as God sees a prayer for prisoners by a prisoner. Um, so I am going to pray that, and then we will get, I will introduce our speakers. In this darkness, we may be blinder than we even know. See for us, Lord Jesus, that we may see, that we may love, that we may show the mercy that you have shown us. Help us to see you in others and also even in ourselves. You are our amazing grace. This is our hope that, I'm, that we may imitate you, that we may live no longer for ourselves, but for you. Please live in us and grant us your forgiveness as we forgive all and seek to see you in all your dear ones. You have given us a greater understanding of our Father's love. And even in our sins and brokenness, we receive your forgiveness. You have sent us your Holy Spirit who teaches us a way to live and to love. You fed we are fed by you, Lord Jesus, and you reside in us. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We need your mercy now and always so that we may truly recognize you and your will in whatever disguise you may take. We pray in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. So this afternoon, I would like to introduce our two speakers. First, I will introduce Sister Angel Henke. She is a beloved and committed volunteer of Kobe House and advocate of women in jail. She has been a daughter of charity of St. Vincent's de Paul and Louise de Merillac for, for 63 years. She began facilitating her art therapy experience, painting from the heart with women in jail in Milwaukee, where she ministered for five years before bringing her ministry to Cook County Jail in Chicago, where she has been active for 10 years. Her numerous uh, previous experiences in ministry include 15 years as a chaplain in a trauma hospital in Detroit and 20 years in childcare. In addition to her current ministry in the jail, she also manages inventory for Kobe House Reentry Ministry and mobilized funding from her congregation to remodel the material resource area. She has become a cornerstone at Kobe House and radiates joy as she shares her stories with everyone she meets. Also joining her will be Emily Cortina. She is the coordinator of outreach and formation at Kobe House Jail Ministry of the Archdiocese of Chicago. Her previous experiences include youth and family parish ministries in Chicago and abroad. She graduated from Catholic Theological Union with an MA in intercultural ministry in 2015, where her focus was on restorative justice in parish communities. During the past five years, Emily has served in direct ministries of accompaniment with women in Cook County Jail and with families of men and women incarcerated. Emily also leads Kobe House's outreach to parishes across the Archdiocese, where the aim is to empower, motivate, 
and support parishes in their journey to serve as sources of welcome and reconciliation for individuals and families affected by incarceration. So without further ado, I am gonna turn this over for now to Sister Angel and Emily. Hello everyone. Welcome to Painting from the Heart. And that's what I call it, simply and realistically. I'm going to start uh, with our point of entry uh, in our little painting space over at Cook County. This is how it looks. It's a small space of a table and two chairs and with the easel and paints and um, uh, uh, brushes and a palette and water-based oils. And we have these kinds of oils because uh, they don't have any odor or smell because a lot of the ladies have um, allergies and so, but they're still brilliant, they're smooth and they're wonderful to paint with. When the ladies come, we sit first in front of the easel and there's a piece of canvas on the easel for them. And I ask them to raise the piece of canvas to their eye level because I get tall ladies and medium size and short ladies. So they put a tape on each corner and uh, adjust the canvas to their size. And then we start talking, we talk and we share. They share a little bit about their lives and I share a little bit about mine to get acquainted. And this helps me to become acquainted with those images that are on the inside. And those images that some of them are stuck and I have those too, but images too that are all ready to come up and to emerge. And so after uh, our sharing, then, uh, th then I introduce the materials to them. This, um, the oil paints uh, are on the table in front of them and there's a whole lot of colors there. And then uh, the brushes, we have wide ones and medium size and and very thin ones for detail. And, um, and so then I ask them to take an empty brush and to just take it across the canvas, this way, that way, any way they want to, just to get the feel of the brush first, because none of these women have ever painted before with oil paints. Some of them have gifts, but they never knew that they have the gift. And uh, lots of times this gift emerges as they're painting and they discover it for the first time. Some of them are artists and they doodle or they sketch with what the simple materials they have. And so when they get to these real oils, they are very, very excited. Some of the ladies, when they come in, because they've never had this experience before, they sit in the chair and uh, they're very interesting and quite cute. They sit in the chair and they say, I'm not an artist. I don't know how to sketch. I've never painted before. I'm really scared, but I want to do this so much. And so I said, good, that's why I'm here. And so I try to make this experience and I make it an experience. I like to make it fun and interesting and manageable. I have lots of paintings and I handpicked them today. And um, so I might go quickly with some of them. And then I will explain some of them a little more in detail. Because when you see the illustration, the story of these ladies, and um, it just is, is so interesting. And I'm humbled. I'm humbled for their uh, genuineness in bringing these, in, these images up. And, um, and I'm inspired with them, too. And, you know, I meet beautiful women. And, you know, of course, I see the best side of them but they're beautiful. And I say that because I try to start where they are and I search for their beauty. And sometimes I say this to them, I have found your beauty. You are just a real beautiful woman. And so then sometimes we talk about that. And then I search for their kindness and I search for the qualities that they might possess that maybe they haven't felt for a long time. This is a sample of a painting and texture. They can take their brush and they learn texture. They learn how to paint smooth. They learn how to paint rough. They learn all different styles of painting. 
and I don't touch their canvas. Sometimes when they get stuck, they say, oh, here, will you do this? Will you fix this? I say, uh-uh, that canvas is yours. But we'll talk about the space where they get stuck. And it's really very fun because sometimes that space, they will end up leaving it and it becomes part of their painting because we've talked about it. We've worked it through and we found a solution or we found that it really fit and that it didn't ruin their painting. It added to their painting. They learn how to take their brush. And this particular woman took with her right hand, switch the brush this way and learn how to just how to use the brush. I encourage them to learn and to let the brush give to them. When they put the paint on the brush, whether it's a little bit or a lot, the brush can give to them and it shows them how they can do design, how they can do texture, how they can do all kinds of things with their brush in accordance to how they feel. They use their favorite colors. They also learn how to make colors too. I don't have all the colors that maybe they need uh, and that's on purpose so that they learn how to make their own colors and discover many things. This is texture down here. She chose to put rocks. And so the, the white that you see here is, is lifted up from the canvas and there's this very thick paint. She did this with her right hand and went this way. She did this with her left hand and went this way. She also learned that when she looks at a body of water, that it's not just one color. It can be many colors. It can be turquoise. It can be dark blue. It can be green. It can be white. And, and, and so they learn many different things. I say to them, you know, um, you can paint whatever you want to paint. That canvas is yours. So we do talk about things in nature. Um, we talk about things from their childhood. We talk about um, symbolic, painting symbolic, because many of the women have had family members taken away to the violence of the streets. And some of them have, um, have had uh, loss of children, miscarriage and loss of young children. And, um, but many of them have had experiences that they like to remember too. And so they say, oh, I can't paint that. I said, oh, yes, you can. And so we talk through what they want to paint, what they don't think they can do, but they always end up doing it. It's like talking about it. And then they take the brush and very simply discover that they can do it. A lot of the women paint their dark side. And so they paint their dark side, they paint their transition, they paint into the light, and they paint their hopes and their dreams. This is a good illustration of that. I'm starting with the dark part of their lives. And some of them, I just wonder how they have survived. And then the intermediate part, they're coming out of the darkness. I said, your darkness is not hopeless. So we have to move from that. And you can do that in this painting. So they move from the dark into the transition of the next level. Let's go further. So then they even go to the lighter side and then they move out of that into their hopes and dreams. And as you see, this woman used her brush with water a little bit differently. These two birds up in the corner is herself and a friend. Oh, I, I love this one. This is Beach Day with my six hearts. And the six hearts are her six children. And she had an Afro before she came into Cook County. So she put herself with an Afro. She loved makeup on her face. So she gave herself, accented her eyelashes, which are just so cute. And she just chose to put herself like this because she accented on her heart and her Afro. I think her hair must have been very important to her. And take note of how she did the sun because each woman does the sun differently. I think this is quite cute. And she's got a number three here and a number three here, which symbolizes her six children. She wanted to draw her six children, but that would be too hard for your first time. So I recommend that they keep that in their heart, but then they look for something symbolic to uh, paint and, and to represent what means a lot to them. Some of the paintings I'm going to go a little faster with, and some I will explain a little more. This woman was in her 60s, 
And um, she just loves Saturday mornings. And she, I encourage the women to find a title for their painting. Every artist, after you do your painting, you find a title for your painting. And that brings the viewer into the meaning of the painting. And the title becomes very, very important. And we talk about the importance of this too. So they sit and they really think very hard about a title of their painting. This is Family Times. And this is like Saturday morning when her grandchildren would come over and she'd make oatmeal for them. And they sit on the couch and watch cartoons. She knew each of her grandchildren by the back of their hands. And she did this quite quickly. She was so surprised and amazed. She said, I can't draw a TV. I said, yes, you can. What does a TV look like? What kind of figure is it? What kind of image is it? And she said, oh, well, it's a square. Good, do a square. So she did. And I said, just symbolically put the screen in there. So they also figure out how they can do things with suggestions. I do not touch their paintings. This is another family painting. A lot of them do their families. She chose these figures. She calls, this woman was in her late 60s, and um, she calls this Grandma's Gifts. And she's leading this little parade of people, and these are all her grandchildren. Grandma's Gifts. Take note of her son, too. It's that cute. Each son is so different. We talk about things in our past, too. Maybe enjoyable experiences we've had as children. A lot of these women have spent a lot of their lives on the streets, and under bridges and in cardboard boxes and, you know, vacant buildings and things like that. But a lot of them do have some memories of childhood. This one is called The Joyful Swing. She talked at length about how she would swing so high and feel so good and think of many things. And as she painted, she became very, very focused with the swing. And I know that she was feeling the pulse of the swing and that's what you hope for. You hope that they feel their painting, not just paint, but feel their painting, forget the brush and move right into their painting. I love this one too. This is a vanity of one of the women that she has at home with, with the lights. She was able to do that. And then she said, oh, but my counter has lots of stuff on it, but I don't think I'll put all the stuff on it. <clears throat> I'll just put my lipstick this time. And then when she got to her mirror, she sat, she sat for a little length of time. She thought and thought, and she said, who am I? And she said, that's the title of my painting. Who am I? I was one person before Cook County, but I'm a different person now in Cook County. I've learned many things, but who am I? I'm still learning who I am, but her pleasure, was her vanity, and most certainly she fixed, she felt that. We have paintings uh, with hearts, a lot of hearts. This, you can see the dark side with the emerging out, but then she emerged into colors, into the bright side. She calls this the beauty of resilience. This is another broken heart. I'm a survivor of domestic violence. A lot of hearts are broken, and so they depict the broken heart. This one is kind of close together, but some hearts are far away from each other. This is her heart and her children's hearts. This is one of a heart that's farther apart. And all of these white marks are her teardrops. She said, trying to mend a broken heart. And they, these paintings take a good hour and a half to maybe two hours. This is another heart. These are pieces of glass and her, her um, teardrops are three-dimensional. There, there's a lot of paint here. She didn't paint to separate her heart. She, her heart was cracked. As she said, sometimes I encourage them to write something about their paintings. They don't know they can write, but so when they start, they come out with something like this. When I paint, I look at my shattered pieces of glass that represent my life. All my trials and tribulations that brought me to this point in my life and have made me who I am today. From the deepest rivers of my heart, I paint. Often the painting tends to cry with me. 
a shared pain, a shared, a shattered person hurts tremendously, but heals with time and only time will tell. We have paintings that depict people who have passed away from natural death, from violence on the streets in many different ways. So this is this inmate's silhouette. She wanted to paint herself. So I had her look at her shadow on the wall and she got her silhouette and she painted her silhouette. And this is her daddy, daddy love, guardian angel, because her daddy died while she was in Cook County, but put him in the light and made her son. This turquoise color is her home. Let me skip this one. Many of them do sunsets or sunrises because they don't get outside a lot, maybe a little bit. But this woman was 54 years old and she had been in prison for 24 years. And this is what she said. If you choose to go a certain way, make sure you can handle the consequences that come along with that choice, even the ones you cannot see. And she spent a long time and she calls this serenity. This one is called Bright Journey. And you can see, starting from the darkest point of her life and these stepping stones into the bright sun where her hope and her dreams lie. Another sunset, I had to share this one. This is called Freedom. And she learned how to use her brush. And they take these images that are way deep and been inside for a long time. And they become very vulnerable and bring them up. And that's where I'm inspired. I'm always amazed. And that's where I find their beauty. And um, then the little birds in the painting too are uh, her family members. We have jail paintings too. This is one in Freedom of Mind. And this is, uh, you can, this hardly needs an explanation. This is one, this is called No More Locked Doors. And then she put her hearts, which represented her hope and her freedom. And I will end this session with this painting. I love this painting. And these are emotions coming out of her head. Now this young woman too, she, she is an artist and she knows she's not painted before, but she also wrote, I don't think my painting or drawing is talent or skill. I believe that once my hand touches the pen or the brush, my mind goes blank and it's all emotions and feelings from there on. I don't stop to think about what to draw or paint. I just let my heart allow my hand to put on paper what it feels and what weighs it down or what's making it beat. Whatever I paint or draw, it is nine times out of 10 to express or release some time, some kind of emotion. Whether it's good or bad or happy or sad, I pour my all into my art, which is why people always think it could be beautiful or amazing. It's not that, it's not talent, it's raw emotions and it's all from my heart. And I also want to mention too, that sometimes after they paint, we take the paintings after they dry, we take them into the tear, and they share their paintings with the other people in the tier. They also share them with the officers, with the, with the sheriffs of Cook County. And sometimes the sheriffs have a, a, a change of attitude toward the woman too, because they've never seen them stay in one place or be so focused with one thing for such a long time, which is an hour to maybe two. And, and this influences them and inspires them. And sometimes some of the women say, gee, that officer, She's been nice, she's been nicer to me. So it's been my privilege to share these images from the heart and from the deep resources of all these women. It's their story, it's their life, but it's also their masterpiece. Thank you very much and blessings. Thank you, Sister Angel. And then now we're gonna have Emily do a presentation. Okay. Hello, thank you. Sorry, I don't. Thank you so much, Sister Angel. Thank um, you. That was wonderful. And please hold on to your 
comments and questions for Sister Angel, definitely don't let those go from your mind, write them down. Um, we did plan the, our timing to have plenty of time for input after our sharing. So um, yeah, please hold on to those. Don't let them leave you. Um, I am going to share my screen. I'm very grateful, I guess I'll start by saying, uh, grateful to speak into this topic. I'm not a master artist or any, you know, I, I feel very honored to be able to bear witness to some of the work that's gone on here at Colby House. And um, we've conceived of this webinar to, to put side by side kind of the, um, the individual healing power of art with community, right? With the healing power in, in community. So that's what I'll um, speak to a little bit today. Um, I wanna start by lifting up a few words of an artist who has left a strong imprint here on Colby House, which we'll, we'll um, learn about in a minute. His name is Guillermo Delgado, and he's a professor now um, at a university doing inside out prison art courses with um, folks who are in prison and students at the university. Um, this is what uh, one thing he said. I'm not saying art will save you, but as humans, we need hope to survive and excel. Art is hope. And hope allows us to imagine something better for ourselves and the world. In turning now to the power of art in mobilizing and building our communities, in particular, our Catholic churches, I find these words to be a very powerful lens through which to view the role of art in ministry. Okay, so Guillermo Delgado, who said that, was the lead artist for a community art project that took place 20 years ago. Um, we're celebrating the 20th anniversary at Colby House. It's not this one. Um, it was part of our Santuario art piece, which is a three level altar piece inspired by what you see here. Um, this is the Kiskama altarpiece in South Africa, which was created to be a message of hope for people who are living in the midst of poverty, AIDS, and other hardships. And it has three levels. The three levels of the original altarpiece are crucifixion, resurrection, and reality. And so appropri appropriately for Easter season, um, today we're just going to um, focus on one of those levels, which is the resurrection level, um, what you see here from the original piece, and then the resurrection level in Colby House's Santuario. On Holy Saturday, 20 years ago, Colby House hosted a day-long retreat for the full network of, of folks connected with Colby House, for formerly incarcerated individuals and their families, for jail volunteers, families with loved ones in prison, mothers who had lost children to violence, donors and parishioners of our local host parish and one of our sharing parishes. Folks who otherwise had no direct experience with the criminal legal system. And more than a hundred people attended and came together for this Holy Saturday workshop. After a time dedicated to introductions of all the participants, the, art, the community artist Guillermo led the art workshop. Each person in attendance created an outline of one of their hands, an ojalata, which is a popular form of Mexican art using tin. And you see some examples here. They were invited to decorate their hand with images or words that represented somehow their love for those who were incarcerated. Afterwards, the hands were arranged very intentionally to be touching one another and reaching up towards the wounded hands of the resurrected Jesus. And that's what we see here. This image has become a powerful symbol for us at Colby House. In fact, we recently created a video using this image to introduce, introduce our ministry to children um, in religious set and in Catholic schools in the archdiocese. And we invite them to create their own hand out of construction paper and decorate it with messages of welcome and affirmation for all who come into Colby House. And we have those hanging in our front entryway. 
Colby House certainly isn't the first organization to use art to engage the community. And in fact, we can think a long history of particularly activists and social movements who have really tapped into the power of communal art in creating change. I'm sure many of you have participated or led communal art projects related to incarceration or to some of the other social issues um, intersecting with it. Though I suspect that we are underutilizing this resource in the Catholic Church. When I was at CTU, I had the privilege of learning from the late Father Bob Schreider, a world-renowned figure in reconciliation and peace building in post-conflict societies. While that's not exactly our context here, reconciliation and peace building are certainly part of our goal. And he writes this, the capacity to imagine peace, that is to think differently about the conflict situation in order to come to new possibilities that might end the conflict, is now being recognized as one of the most important qualities of a peace builder. The capacity to imagine, to imagine reconciliation, to imagine healing, to imagine perhaps a world where our parishes are havens of welcome, where members treat each other as equal in dignity, where we realize that it's only in reaching out to Jesus in communion with each other that we can finally be reconciled. It is the capacity to imagine the kingdom of God. As Guillermo Delgado said so beautifully, art allows us to imagine something better for ourselves and for the world. And that's what we see in the, with the power of, our, of this mural um, hand in hand, mano con mano. Father Arturo Perez was the director of Colby House and the pastor of the local parish at the time that this um, santuario was created. And this is how he described the impact of the project. The Hands Art Project was meant to be creative, informing community where everyone belongs and is connected to one another. Our hands joined the resurrected wounded hands of Jesus and forming one body in service of one another. The act of creating was communal. A buffet lunch was served, an essential part of creating community and serving one another. For one brief moment, Jesus's word that all might be one was lived. The work of Colby House and a guiding vision for us is one body made whole. We are all one body of Christ, but as we know, working in prison ministry, we are so fractured. This is the work of prison ministry and truly the work of the church, making one body made whole. And with that, we would love to hear your questions or stories about how art has served as a tool for imagining new realities in your ministries. First of all, before we begin any stories or hearing from the, from the uh, participating uh, viewers here, I just wanna thank you, um, Emily and Sister Angel for your presentation. It has been remarkable. I mean, the um, drawings that the women did are just absolutely amazing. And that comes from somebody who can't really draw um, stick people. But <laughs> I don't believe I have an artistic bone, but those drawings, I mean, I think when they, you know, come into to your area and it, it allows them that kind of space to almost escape from the, um, their, their current situation. And it allows them to, like you say, dream, envision something outside of their current world. So I, I appreciate the information that you both have shared on today. Uh, we're going to ask people to either put your questions in the chat, or if possible, you can raise your hand and we can let you speak. Um, but we want to just a few minutes. We, we got a few minutes to be, be able to share and, and take advantage of, of asking them questions. And as, as people are trying to do that, let me see if I can get another view of my screen. Just make sure I don't miss anybody's hand going up. Well, I'll start. How about uh, Sister Angel? 
I, I had I wrote down a question. What has been your greatest joy of working with uh, incarcerated men and women and, and sharing this art project? I think one of the greatest joys that I do experience is to watch the women change. Um, they gain confidence. They gain a little more emotional stability from this painting from the heart because they take those images that are stuck that maybe they haven't shared um, with anyone for a long time and they become very vulnerable and they bring these images up and they put them on that white canvas, make that white canvas disappear with color. That amazes them and it just humbles me to see how they grow even in that short time of a few hours. Mm. And um, this is a joy, but it's also a spiritual joy for them too, because they do it. And um, we set the stage, I set the stage for them to enter into something they've never done before and discover maybe just a little bit of how more they are. And some of that even starts maybe a healing. And this is one of my greatest joys, just to see sometimes their faces change too, mm -hmm. and, and how honest they are to me about their feelings. And I handle them very delicately and, um, and try to begin, like I said, where they are and move through the time element, move with them in their painting and guide them. And uh, this is, my privilege, and I feel it's, you know, I've been called to my ministry, and I didn't know I could do this and have learned to do it and keep learning it too. Is well, you're definitely the encouraging, so I, I appreciate that. I'm sure that the encouragement that you give to them and just allowing them the freedom to do what they, they need to do is, is, is wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Karen, do you want to say your question or you want to? Thank you. Yes, yeah, sister, I was going to ask you. Um, now, I know that uh, you, you had mentioned that you, the ladies are able to come and pick up their pictures later. But I was just curious at, at your time at Colby, if you've been able to create a situation where, since this is a beautiful, I, I look at it as a counseling prayer, prayer form um, of ministry and uh, having people through their senses to be able to go inward. Um, have you been able to recreate this on the, on the, uh, re with the returning, once they've returned to society? Um, let's see, what was the last part of your question, please, before? Um, have, have you been able to set up a situation where you could have them have an art experience or redo this once they have re-entered re society? as a prayer form, as a counseling form. You know what I have found? Um, I have hoped for this to be um, that once they are released and they do come to Kobe House for, for services, but also to get their painting, that maybe they would come back and paint here too. But I do find that there are so many cares and concerns when they do get out, so mm -hmm. much adjustment that maybe that's the last thing they might think about. But I still have hope, you know, that they might do this. Um, I've called a couple ladies. They they want to do it, but it's another thing in making time amid all of the things that they have to re-enter into. So maybe this will build up in the future. I, I hope it does. And maybe I can figure out a way that we could make this happen a little bit easier. But this is what I've learned so far, you know, in the time that I've been at Colby for these couple of years. So well, we'll keep reaching for that. That's a very good question. That's my hope. <laughs> Thank you. Sounds like a beautiful retreat experience to me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> a reunion retreat. Definitely. I'm not seeing, please feel free to either raise your hand or put a question in the chat. Uh, Sister Angela, how often do you get to meet with the women? And How is it often? the same group? How often is it the same group that comes or you have a different flow of people that come through? Right. Um, this experience is done one-on-one. -on -one. And mm. um, because the experience becomes very personal, 
And the woman sometimes becomes very vulnerable, you mm -hmm. know, to what she's putting on the canvas. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very private. So I do choose to do one on one. And I do go into Cook County two times, two days a week now. Um, before COVID, it was three. I guess I'm lucky to even come back too, you know. <laughs> so, but, and it takes a long time. I do, um, um, Megan is, is my contact person and she does have a long list, but the ladies wait. And, mm -hmm. um, and then when it is their turn, it's very exciting for them. And, uh, and so then, then they go back and they tell the other ladies what it was like and we get more names on the list. But um, we just kind of, I stick to that one and one because of the, uh, of the release of feelings and the personal view of their experiences and putting that and learning to put that on canvas. So um, it is, uh, you know, I don't do this in a group. Although sometimes mm -hmm. uh, when I do go, I make time to maybe do, they can only have colored pencils. So mm -hmm. I, I do a few little exercises with those who want to in the tier. And, uh, but it's not as personal as it is with mm -hmm. painting art. Because there's so many ladies that want to paint. So I, you know, kind of supplement with this little group experience of learning to work with pencils, with the point, with the side, with the shading, and, you know, a lot of the features that we do with the brush. Wonderful. Thank you. Jared, did you want to ask your question? Sure. Thank you, Sister Angel. Um, you know, I don't think any of us here can deny the power of art and mm -hmm. the power of creating and its rest restorative and expressive properties. And, you know, I see the work that you've done and the work that Colby House largely does with art. And I, I think that's that's a, a model to strive toward. Right. Um, I could also see it being intimidating to try and start that process, to start that kind of programming. So, I, I you know, I'm just curious what way back when you first started this logistically, what did that look like? Were there barriers? What were they? Was it a process? How did you how did you begin to to offer this ministry? How did you begin to accompany these women in this particular way? In this particular, you know, it was very easy, very interesting. Um, I started in Milwaukee. And um, in fact, the warden interviewed me, you know, because he wanted more activities for the women. And so I was a contact and I went and he interviewed me for an hour. And, uh, and do you know, you know how hard it is to get the fingerprint process done? I was back in that prison for in, in a week. So I started out doing cards because um, another sister and I had a storefront art studio for low income people in Milwaukee. And we, I started with cards and I did this for about a year because we had lots of resources for that and other simple art activities. But I always felt on the inside, there was something more, something more I could give to the women, but I couldn't figure that out. Till one day when I was painting on my own, I thought, I wonder if I could do oil painting with the women. It, it involves a lot more. So I went to the supervisor of the, uh, the superintendent of the women and presented the idea well, you know what? She grabbed it. She grabbed it. So she gave me one of the counselor's offices in the tier, because in Milwaukee, they had two offices. And I, I set it up and I demonstrated for her how I would do it with the table easel, with the, uh, the water soluble oils that had no oil, uh, no um, you know, odor that mm. for the ladies who might have uh, allergies and and, uh, and, and maybe I kind of thought of how I would do it. So then uh, there were inmates that wanted to paint. So um, the first lady came in and I just started. And you know what I was surprised and amazed to? I guess this is part of my gift that I've been given. Mm -hmm. And because I've been yeah. called to this ministry, mm -hmm. um, I didn't know about it. I didn't ask for it. I was really called to it. And when you're called to something, mm -hmm. you pay attention to that, you know, with your intuition and your interview and what happens to you. And so many natural things came out of me too. And the ladies, they, they inspired me and called for things from me that I didn't know I had in relation to them and supporting them and guiding them. And so I kept learning and kept learning and, and also my background, my education too. But I, 
I strive to make it simple. I strive to make it fun. And I strive to make it manageable. And I strive to make it something that they could hold in their heart realistically. And then feel good about something they've never done before. And, and, and use it for their own growth. Thank you. I, I really appreciate the, the keeping it simple and allowing um, the women and the spirit to guide where that goes and mm -hmm. where, the, where it might develop. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. so Karen had another question about how are you reaching out to the community to call more artists to this work? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, let's see, I'm thinking how to answer that question. Um, it's not something that has been on our um, radar necessarily to reach out to artists. I guess the, the outreach is drawing in um, the communities, right? But uh, yeah, I, I, I I'm not sure, I guess. Uh, that's an interesting question. And I thank you for, for, um, for posing that, um, you know, how to connect maybe with the artist community and just bringing more people together, right? The more connections we make and relationships mm -hmm. we build, we kind of bring people together and learn how to share talents with each other. So that's certainly part of the work, um, but making a concerted effort to reach out to artists. Good suggestion. And not only artists, I think, you know, how you reached out to the faith communities. I know that's how I came to visit a Kobe house last year in that, you know, we, we, we came together and did a tour and, and walked around and just got to know uh, what uh, Kobe house really entails. And so I think that was awfully, you know, very useful um, from a person coming from, you know, a, a faith community background where we do outreaches. And so it's always interesting to be able to do that kind of um, visits to be able to, you know, connect with that, to see what you're doing and see how that we as a faith community connect can connect with you. Um, so we appreciate that. And I know uh, Mary Claire Birmingham, is she over um, Kobe House? Is Mary Claire? Mm -hmm. Okay, Mary yeah. Claire, do you wanna, you, you mentioned something here uh, and you wanna just kind of uh, talk about that. I know you put something in the chat. And I don't know if she wants to come on or we have uh, a couple of more minutes. Sure, I can do that, Kimberly. Um, let me give my start, sorry. Um, yes, as I mentioned in the um, chat, we definitely at Colby House would love to see the arts um, developed more in ministry, uh, both inside the jail and um, behind bars, and but to pe particularly people in the community. Um, we are uh, actively working to develop more ministry on our campus, which is gonna take quite some time, um, but we are planting those seeds and um, in our hopes and dreams is to include the arts in that ministry because art is really one of our best avenues for seeing each other as human beings. When we see the art of the women in the jail that Sister Angel displayed um, and the art of the community that created uh, the hands that Emily showed, it, it really connects us very closely to, you know, that um, our essential goodness, our essential, our essential nature as image and likeness of God. Um, and more than all of our uh, brokenness, our missteps, our ways we've hurt each other, and that we have within us that great capacity for beauty and goodness. And I think art is such an effective way for us to see beyond the barriers, um, to, to break down the barriers of seeing uh, the labels and the stigmas that have been applied to people and just see the human being. Um, and then when we see the human being, we relate as brothers and sisters. So um, it's a pathway that I think is just um, so powerful for us to offer to those 
um, suffering, the impacts of crime and incarceration, but also for the community, for us as witness to the community to help generate reconciliation and restoration for the community with people who have been justice involved and are ready to be more than more than just that, more than that, just that label and ready to return to being who they're called to be. So, so we do really hope to develop this, um, the arts. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you all do a fantastic job with that. I can say moving them beyond who they are at that present and moving them into something and looking at something more than they can be. So that is a wonderful ministry. So Thanks. we don't have any more questions. So I am going to, I have a course. Oh, Okay, there is a question. Are you able to have the women meet in groups to talk about their art pieces? Oh, yes, yes. Um, after the paintings dry, you know, there's, there's usually several women in one tier. And then I take the paintings into the tier and we sit around and they share their painting. And lots of times the women, um, they ask the, the painter uh, about their painting. And sometimes the women in the tier see this particular individual who's sharing her painting a little bit differently. And so it's inspiring to the women in the, in the tier too. And uh, we do do that. And, uh, and even if there aren't more than one in a tier, if there's just one, I take the painting into the tier and she shares her painting. Okay, great. And there is another question. Um, Pancellas was asking if, if there are avenues for the artist to generate revenue for their art through the ministry. It may entice various artists to get involved and stay engaged even as they are returning to their communities. Is, does that happen at all? No, we haven't adventured that part. We haven't adventured that at all. What, um, what I do, they can't keep their paintings at Cook County. So, you know, I have a portfolio, can you imagine? I have mm -hmm. 10 portfolios for my 10 wow. years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I keep the paintings, but then I also take a photo, as you saw in the background photos on our little board up there, and they can have photos. So I take um, photos of their painting and they can have the photos for themselves. And that, that continues their admiration of mm -hmm. themselves in painting and they can share it with their families. And uh, that's their keepsake. And then when they find time, they can come back to Kobe House now and uh, they've been able to do that the last couple of years. They haven't always done that because I've not been connected with Kobe House during the whole 10 years, but, uh, but now they can. And we have had some of, the, uh, some of the women come back for their paintings and it's like a reunion too. <laughs> and we sit there, we talk about the painting experience all over again. So it's, it's really lovely when they come back for their paintings. I think too, I, I would just lift up uh, Minister Kimberly, the other organizations who are thinking about that, right? And I, as I said before, we're certainly not the only ones thinking about how to build on this. Um, it, we just heard in a webinar last week from Precious Blood, they've done amazing things with art in their community and um, they have an art gallery. So if someone's local to here, that's another place to really connect with the art of folks who are incarcerated or recently released. Um, and I think, you know, in thinking about reaching out to artists to in tying this to our community outreach, um, I think, you know, art is such a big word that can encompass so many different things, right? And it can be as simple as, as, simple as pulling out a box of crayons and, and a paper and, and just kind of sharing what, you know, drawing, letting that speak. Um, and I think that's, I, that's how I think about it with kids. Like we've wrestled so much. How do we talk about jail ministry with kids? How do we bring this to religious ed? And um, it, it turned out to be a really um, powerful tool to just, well, let's, let's crack open their imaginations and let them imagine, wow, I can actually welcome someone. I can do something about this. I can put, I can put some small part of my heart in, into this uh mm -hmm. world right so um yeah just some thoughts that have been swirling about those i see mary claire is also sharing i know we're short on time that mm -hmm. um that we're planning to display the women's paintings here mm -hmm. at colby house at an upcoming anniversary event so we would love to you know share that with you as it as the details come out 
Definitely, definitely. And and some other things that are in the chat, Jared has been putting up different things about the Kobe House and there's an NPR article on art while incarcerated. So feel free to chat, uh, to jot those down. And that's what CPMC is about. We're about providing you that minister um, um, to the incarcerated, whether it be, or doing restorative justice work um, to be able to, we, we try to provide you with the resources that you need and skills even sometimes, you know, through our, through our town halls, through workshops and webinars, and just information that's located on our website. So by all means, please visit that. And um, Cara is gonna put up the upcoming events so I can give you that information, I do believe. And as she's doing that, I am going to start with um, next week on Wednesday, May 11th, there is an accompaniment of the whole person, a psychosocial and educational approach. It's a presentation about how educational programs can accompany Catholic ministry. Uh, Kobe House volunteers, Dean N Nadine Nander, I can't pronounce his last name, Nadine Nidental and Mike McGillicuddy will share their insights and initiatives. So excuse me, I'm sorry, Dean, I didn't get your last name right. Um, on, on May 19th, there's a nonviolent communication um, webinar, uh, Heart to Heart Empowers Men and Women to Live Increasingly Free and Fruitful Lives Through Mindfulness Practices, Teaching Nonviolent Communication, Yoga Meditation, and Healing of Trauma decision-making, conflict resolution, and more. And, and then there's a Sonato feedback. Uh, CPMC is interested in capturing the voices and perspectives of those who minister to those affected by incarceration and detention. We invite you to share your reflections through our survey available as a Google form through the QR um, code um, on that slide. Um, but we also send it out in a um, email so that in the, all those that are on our email system will actually get that. Again, Sister Angel and Emily and Mary Claire, we, we thank you uh, for sharing with us what everything that Kobe House has to offer um, through art um, is definitely a way to, um, like I say, envision um, things beyond our imagination. And that's what God is always trying to open up to us, open us to it. You know, things don't look at our little silos, but look beyond our imagination. So we, again, thank you for your time. We thank you for all those who participated on today and we ask you to continue to join us. So again, thank you and have a blessed day and rest of this week.